Hello and welcome back to another lecture. In this lecture, we are going to be creating the VPC for our project. And our VPC is going to have public and private subnets in two different availability zones. To create our VPC, the first thing you have to do is select the region where you want to create this VPC. Currently, I'm in the Northern Virginia region and this is where I want to create my VPC. But if you want to create yours in a different region, click on this drop down and select your region. That's the first step. Next, we are going to select services, then come down to networking and content delivery and select VPC. On the left side, select your VPCs. Once you are in here, you click create VPC. And in here, we are going to give our VPC a name. And I'm just going to use the name of the project so I can identify that VPC that way. I'll call it Jupyter VPC. Then we are going to enter our CIDR block. It is going to be 10.0.0.0 slash 16. Under IPv6 CIDR block, we are going to leave the settings as default. Under tenancy, we are also going to leave it as default. Then we can click create VPC. And we have created our VPC. To see your VPC, you can select your VPCs again. And you can filter it here. I'm not seeing the VPC in here. So I can refresh my page. And when I go back in there, and you can see my VPC, I'll select it. And here's the VPC. One thing that I want to mention is when you create your VPC, it is going to also create a route table for you. And when I click on route table, you can see the route table here. By default, this route table is private. And this is the route table we are going to use for our private subnet. We are going to cover that later on. I just want to mention it. The next thing we have to do now is create an internet gateway and attach that internet gateway to our VPC. An internet gateway allows the instances in your VPC to have access to the internet. So on the left side, select internet gateways and we are going to create a new internet gateway. Click create internet gateway here and let's give it a name. Following the naming convention for my VPC, I'm going to call it Jupyter IGW. Then click create internet gateway. We have created that internet gateway. Select internet gateways again. And this internet gateways you are seeing in my VPC, these are the internet gateways that I have for other VPCs in my AWS account. And you can only attach one internet gateway to a VPC. Currently, you can see that these two internet gateways are attached to the demo VPC over here and this default VPC. But our Jupyter IGW we just created is detached. We need to attach it to our VPC. To do that, we are going to select our Jupyter IGW, then under actions, then click attach to VPC. In this drop down, we are going to select our Jupyter VPC and click Attach Internet Gateway. And that step is complete. The next thing we are going to do now is create our public subnets into different availability zones. On the left side, select subnets. And I am in my Jupyter VPC now. And you can see currently I don't have any subnets in it. Click Create Subnet. We are going to give our subnet a name. I'll call it public subnet one and click on the drop down. Make sure it is in your VPC, whatever name you gave your VPC. Mine is the Jupyter VPC. Make sure it is in that VPC. And under availability zone preference, click on the drop down and we are going to put it in the US is one a and we are going to give it a CIDR block under IPv4 CIDR block. I'll give it a CIDR block of 10.0.0.0 slash 24. Then once you've entered your CIDR block, click create. And we can close. Remember, we need two public subnet. So I'll create another subnet again. I'll just click create subnet. And I'll give it a name. I'll call it public subnet 2. Then click on the drop down and make sure it is in the right VPC. Under availability zone preference, we are going to select this drop down. This time we want to put it in the second availability zone. We can select the US East 1B as our second availability zone. Once you select that, 
come down to the IPv4 CIDR block and we are going to give it a CIDR block of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Then click create. Then click close. We now have our two public subnets and you can see the CIDR block here. And you can also see the availability zone our public subnets are in. We have one in USS 1A and one in USS 1B. You can also see that the VPC are the same. And if I um, move this, you can see it is in the Jupyter VPC. Next, we are going to modify the IP settings for these public subnets. So whenever we launch any instance in them, the instance will be assigned an IPv4 address. To do that, select the first public subnet. On that action, click on the drop down and select modify auto assign IP settings. Then in here, we are just going to enable it here and click save. And we'll do the same thing for the second public subnet. Select it on that actions, modify, enable it there and click save. Next, we are going to create a route table for this public subnets. To do that, come to route table, select route tables and click create route table. We are going to give it a name and let's call it public route table. Then we are going to select our VPC. Click on this drop down and make sure you have it in the right VPC. Then click create and click close. We have created our route table. And currently you can see the two route table we have in this VPC. Let's select our public route table and I can move this so you can see. I'm going to select the public route table and I'm going to create a public route for it. To do that, come to the routes tab and I can bring this up so you can see what's going on. And currently we have a local route, which is the route in the VPC. Click edit route. We'll add a route. And the destination is going to be anywhere. So type 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0. So it's anywhere. And for the target, select the drop down and select internet gateway. Then you want to select your VPC internet gateway. So mine, you can see it is the Jupyter internet gateway. I'll select that. Then click save route and close. This is what makes the subnet a public subnet. So whenever you hear public subnet and private subnet, the difference between both is that the public subnet has an internet gateway attached to its route table. So next, the only thing we need to do is associate our public subnets to this route table. And to do that, while you are still selecting your public route table, come to subnet associations. In here, we don't have any public subnet associated with it, but you can see the two public subnets we have here. Then you can click on edit subnet association. These are the two subnets we want to associate with this route table. We'll select both, click save, and you can see that those subnets are now associated with this route table. And we can also see it up here. You can see our route table. You can see the explicit subnet association. There are two. We have now successfully configured our public subnet. Next, let's create our private subnet. So on the left side, select subnets again. Then click create subnet. We are going to call it private subnet one web tier. Then we are going to select the drop down. Make sure you have it in the right VPC. And under availability zone preference, we'll select the drop down and we want to put it in the US East 1A availability zone, which is the first availability zone we are using. And under IPv4 CIDR block, we are going to give it a CIDR block of 10.0.2.0 slash 24. Then click create. We have now created the subnet. I'm going to click close. Then we are going to create our second private subnet. Click create subnet again. And let's give it a name. We are going to call it private subnet 2 web tier. Then on that VPC, click on the drop down and make sure you have it in the right VPC. 
Under Availability Zone Preference, we are going to select the drop down. This time we want to put it in the US East 1B. And under the IPv4 CIDR block, we are going to give it a CIDR block of 10.0.3.0 slash 24. Once you've entered that, click Create and close. We have now created our private subnet. I can move this so you can see everything. We have two public subnets and two private subnets. You can see the CIDR block here. And you can see the availability zone that these subnets are in. Now that we have created our private subnet, the next thing we need to do is associate this subnet to the route table for the private route. Come to route tables, click on route tables. And we have our two route tables here. The first is a public route table and we have configured that. This second route table is a private route table by default. And this route table was created when we created the VPC. So what we can do here is we can rename this route table and call it private route table. I'm going to do that now. So to rename it, once you hover over here, you see this pencil, select it and enter the name in there. And I'm going to click this check mark. So I've renamed it as the private route table. And currently you can see there isn't any subnet that is associated with this route table. The next thing we need to do is associate our private subnets with this private route table. So let's assign them. The first thing is let's click on route. You don't need to change the route because the route table for your private subnet should only have the local route. And it does not have an IGW route here, meaning that there is no route to the internet. So come to subnet association and click edit subnet association. In here, we want to let me move this so you can see. In here, we want to associate our private subnet 1 and private subnet 2 to this route table. Select those two and click Save. We have now associated our private subnet with the private route table. You can see the private route table is selected. It has two subnets associated to it. And you can also see it down here. And this is how you create this VPC for this project. In the next lecture, we are going to be creating our NAT gateway. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next lecture.